Stop talking. <laughs> so you can start talking. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Okay, last um, teaching. So I think uh, now we Generally, um, we all intellectually know that what is right, what is wrong, but uh, we actually develop uh, these uh, negative uh, seeds, right? Negative uh, karma and emotions in our mind all the time. So usually like some people like have wrong ideas, like for example, <clears throat> some people think like, you know, like I'm I'm a very bad person because uh I was angry yesterday or I was angry um last month or something so um, I'm very bad person so you know um, then you're you sort of don't like yourself um, when you investigate your practice your personality whatever your life then it's kind of start you like uh, you don't like yourself. You kind of like lose this kind of confidence um, because um, I did that, this and that last time, you know. So I'm very bad person. So that's not good idea, right? So you are still like holding the idea from the past, right? So Buddhists usually don't don't. Uh, think sort of past a lot. So, you know, so, but many people do sort of uh, holding these things, this idea from the past, uh, even like you're not angry today, but your ego, you know, uh, holds a permanent sort of concept of your ordinary self all the time. Uh, so then you feel like, you know, um, I am a bad person, you know, I'm a bad student. Uh, so that means like uh, you don't like yourself, you don't love yourself. Um, you don't know slowly, like there's a separation, like slowly you don't know who you are. Uh, that's uh, one thing. And some people like they don't recognize it's opposite. Some people like they don't recognize their mistakes. Always they think they are right, other people wrong. Um, they always think that. So this both, there, there is a, so if you have that kind of, what do you call it, like pride, whatever, I don't know. So then uh, there is no chance to grow or change your personality because of this pride. You never sort of you don't recognize your mistakes always other complain others that's one person and one person like always take things themselves oh, i'm a very bad person you know that this from buddhist point of view both this view are wrong you know if you hold that kind of a concept throughout your lifetime uh, you become a bad person you know, uh, we cannot develop that kind of thoughts. You know, uh, if you develop positive seeds uh, and create more sort of uh, uh, space and uh, love and kindness in your mind, then each and every time you will get better and you become a good person, 
right? Good person. I think we have to understand those things. Of course, you know that, but so through meditation, again, you know, we can um, recognize our mistakes uh, with, uh, um, you know, like always when we meditate, we, uh, especially like bodhicitta, you investigate the selfishness. And then, so, uh, um, you will recognize your mistakes, um, which will cause your mind to think and react more correctly. Uh, uh, and meditation is to be aware of what is going on. That's the thing, right? On your, um, in our like feelings, in our minds, and therefore meditation is important for all of us. Uh, and uh, uh, there is more room to experience our daily life, um, uh, and more room to let the the selfish mind dissolve. Um, if we uh, uh, meditate. Uh, uh, because right now, like many people, you know, um, every thought that we have is like based on our selfish mind, um, and it controls everything that we do. Um, that's why meditation uh, is not that easy, right? Meditation is not easy at all when we start to practice. Um, it's not so easy, uh, uh, but uh, um, uh, you know. Um, in, on the other hand, meditation is not difficult. So, you know, especially like we have done this uh, objectless shamatha. There is nothing to meditate, <laughs> right? You just uh, stay there. You just don't lose. Don't lose your awareness. That's all. There's nothing. There's no meditation. What is meditation, right? Mahaprabhu um, has another like Dzogchen teaching, very famous, and he says like if you if you don't lose your awareness, if you don't lose the essence of your mind, then whatever it appears, no harm you, no help you. It's just the thing is you don't forget it. That's the meditation. So on that, in that case, you know, meditation is not difficult, uh, not complicated. But on the other hand, meditation is difficult because we have all this <clears throat> selfish mind, you know, um, that controls everything that we do. So in that case, meditation is not that easy. Um, but uh, from the ultimate point of view, and we have the attained sort of that point, then there is no selfish mind. There is no selfish mind. Uh, we have to um, just recognize, uh, the, never lose the, the, the awareness. That's all. Uh, so, uh, so as I said, you know, there are two different. Um, antidotes for the selfish mind, right? That, this, this is the thing. Selfish mind is not good. So uh, we always need to work on the selfish mind. So then there, there are two different very good antidotes for the selfish mind. One is meditating on natural mind, uh, the great perfection, and uh, the other is practice in a bodhicitta mind. Um, so these two things. Otherwise, it's difficult to destroy the selfish mind. Um, and uh, another uh, important thing I want you uh, to remember is uh, try to uh, mix your practice with your daily activities. Uh, that's all we need. We should not try to think that um, there are two sort of separate times. This is my meditation time. This is my worldly life time. That's uh, uh, not so correct. 
So it is important to try to mix your practice with any kind of work uh, because uh, you can use it to make your practice stronger. Um, uh, so that, uh, you know, um, then do your daily things like business, work, etc., you know, but do them sort of together with your practice. Means a little bit like mindfulness, uh, practice in bodhicitta, um, self, this um, self knowing wisdom. Etc. There are many, many, right? So all this um, practice really good for your uh, work and worldly life. If you can do that, then um, <laughs> teachers say that you will be able to accomplish your practice just through that. Um, then whatever you do, like your your business, your work, everything become a your meditation part of your meditation. Uh, uh, because this meditation go with all your worldly activities and they're really useful and support your actions, you know. Um, from that perspective, it would doesn't matter uh, how much worldly activity uh, you do because as long as you mix your practice and with it, you, know, you can do all of your worldly things, all of it. Um, that would be very, very good. Never um, think that there's two separate things. That's why in Buddhism we say nyamjak and jitab. Nyamjak means like meditation time. Jitab means like uh, post-meditation. So very, very important. Most people don't do that, right? When you have meditation, uh, you meditate. And then you go to work you forget your meditation. You just only focus on your work. Ah, oh, people say, I can do that. I cannot do that. I cannot mix my... You can. Whatever you do, you need mindfulness, right? In order to uh, avoid harm other. Um, uh, when you talk with your employees, whatever, um, you need mindfulness. You need kindness. You need bodhicitta. All of that, you can. So anyway, now the next, the text, it says, <clears throat> if devotion, we're there, right? Mm -hmm. If devotion to the teacher grows vast, blessings will enter and inspire the mind. One word, lamar mugi china shinlabjuk. So now here Mahamrambuchi talks about the characteristics of the student. Mm, so um, I think it is very important you need to investigate um, yourself, not only you, me, but some way I'm a teacher, some way I'm a student. So um, we need to sort of uh, investigate ourselves and determine whether we have the quality of student or not. So uh, usually uh, a student uh, needs at least three characteristics in order to practice and attain enlightenment. So the first of the three qualities is wisdom. Wisdom is actually so important in Buddhism, the most important, the wisdom. Uh, so that's the first characteristic of a student. So it is important to develop your wisdom mind. And you know there are three wisdoms, right? Three different kinds of wisdoms. The wisdom of learning, the wisdom of contemplating, um, and the, the wisdom of meditating. These three wisdom you have to develop. Do you understand? Tupi shirp, sambi shirp, gombe shirp. Tupi shirp means learn. Listen. First two you have to listen, learn, you know. Um, and then contemplating what you learn, and then meditating, put them into your meditation. 
So if you develop these three wisdoms, then uh, not only will you have an intellectual understanding, but then you will have some personal experience from your practice. That's why wisdom is important. And second uh, uh, characteristic is devotion for a student. Uh, I would say uh, there are three beliefs that you must develop. Uh, you have to have trust and confidence in your teacher once you have a root teacher. Uh, and you have to have trust and confidence in your lineage uh, because without that, uh, uh, you won't have a connection uh, to the lineage uh, and be able to receive their blessings. Uh, and uh, you have to have trust and confidence in the instructions of your lineage. Because if you uh, don't have these instructions and trust what you are doing with your meditation, then uh, you won't be able to develop your capacities. So you must have confident faith. Otherwise, there are no blessings. Okay? There are no blessings. The Tibetan word for blessing is chinlap. It means transforming into uh, sort of magnificent potential. So blessings refers to the development of virtuous qualities that you did not previously have. If you have a devotion, you will be sort of encouraged to practice. And through that, uh, you will transform into your uh, this uh, magnificent potential. So that is what we call blessings. So devotion, Mahfarm Bhutshi was talking about this devotion, right? Devotion gives you you, you, you those blessings and uh, uh, therefore it is very important to develop. Um, and uh, that's the second, right? Devotion. And then third character a student need is diligence. Um, you have to be sort of prepared to accept difficulties on the path. Otherwise, you're going to give it up. Um, means you should not be satisfied with just doing a little bit sort of practice and uh, go on a retreat uh, or few practice. Uh, uh, you should promise to practice as long as you live and until you have attained enlightenment. Okay, so that is your motivation, another motivation, right? This motivation is not only for this life, but you have to have this motivation until you have attained a liberation. So I'm going to practice, right? I'm going to practice this, this, this and that. And you should promise to practice as long as you live, until you have a time. Maybe not, uh, not this life, uh, maybe next life you have, you know, your liberation. Uh, until that, you need this kind of motivation because the main idea of Buddhist meditation is, you know that, right? To tame the mind, tame the mind. That's the first Buddha, first teaching the Buddha said, to tame the mind. And in order to tame this power for human mind, uh, we need this motivation and we need diligence. And through that, once, once, once the meditation becomes a part of your life, through your diligence, through your sort of uh, motivation, this kind of motivation, your liberation is right there. So, um, 
And attain enlightenment really, I said, depends on your diligence. So you need to develop these qualities. Do you understand? Wisdom, devotion, and diligence. Because without wisdom, without devotion, without diligence, we cannot change anything. So it is, it is your responsibility to make yourself into a good student and become a great sort of practitioner, become a great human being. We can do that. So, you know, the text says, if devotion to the teacher grows vast, blessings will enter and inspire the mind. So he talked about devotion, because devotion to the lineage is the path of liberation. Uh, your devotion comes from trust, and that trust comes from your confidence and certainty. Nishi in Tibet, Nishi means certainty, confidence. And again, all of this comes from your wisdom mind. That's why Buddhism, number one, is wisdom. In order to develop confident faith, trust, devotion, all of this comes from your wisdom mind, not blind mind, wisdom mind, not ignorant mind. That's why wisdom is very important for Buddhist practitioner. It is important to understand that. And in order to practice these teachings, we need a good connection, right? Good connection. Um, mm, often people think devotion is sort of a, uh, blindly trust in something outside. Uh, when we talk about devotion, blessings, um, faith, all of that, you know, again, people focus on outside, um, you know, not something inside, not about wisdom. That's wrong. But devotion means developing a great connection and confidence with your mind with your mind, with your wisdom mind. It arises naturally uh, with the understanding of instructions from your teachers. And the power of sort of genuine experience of your meditation practice. <laughs> so when you realize the benefit of your practice, um, uh, uh, which was given by the lineage, then uh, there will be a real sense of connecting uh, with your mind and your capacity. And then you can feel sort of your own heart connection. That's my teachers always say that. That is the most important part of your whole journey. <coughs> so you should continue to try to develop um, devotion further because your own sort of personal connection with the lineage becomes really powerful. Um, and it is important for uh, your journey to liberation. So you should try to develop your devotion further, no matter how much or what kind of uh, uh, um, emotion arise. So, you know, again, uh, you know this, but the actually liberation is depend upon your devotion to the te teachings and to the power of blessings of, of your lineage. So each individual uh, practitioner need to take this process and follow the detailed instructions and uh, uh, therefore, we need to rely on a spiritual teacher and receive his or her uh, teachings. Uh, uh, you see the master um, Atisha um, said, until you attain enlightenment, you need a teacher. So follow a spiritual teacher and 
the teacher should be understood as the source of all qualities. And until you realize the nature state, you need to learn. So listen to the teacher's instructions. That's Adisha, the Kardamba master, uh, great teacher, he says. Um, and in order to find a good teacher and good lineage, uh, you need to investigate them, you know, as much as you can, as much as you can, as long as you need. Um, you don't have to find a teacher uh, right away. Uh, don't rush. Uh, take your time. Once you have a teacher, you found a teacher um, that is you like um, um, through your sort of what you call investigation, uh, then you have a teacher, right? So then don't investigate your teacher. Just to follow him or her. That's the thing. Uh, the, before you have a teacher, Buddha said, you have to investigate as much as you want, as long as you take. Once you have it, don't, don't investigate anymore because uh, it's not good for you. Uh, so, so I told you this many times, but uh, this is very important to understand. Uh, and uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, according to um, uh, the 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 Nyingma, uh, the, the master Longchimba, um, uh, I will tell you this: there are there are, there are six uh, six stages in the development of a good human beings or good 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 student. Okay. First, he said, you have to study and learn so that you can develop wisdom, right? Second, he said, you have to take the vows, which is, which is permis, permises, right? And third, you have to rely on a good teacher. Okay? And fourth, you have to please your teacher by practicing, making offerings, or doing service activities. And then fifth, you have to meditate with diligence to develop your capacity. And sixth, once you have developed your capacity, then you have to help others tirelessly without complaining. So if someone has gone through these six stages, then we can call them a great human being or great teacher or great student. Just let you know that, okay? Um, and then the, the text says, Mahurambuchi, again, and when Accumulations are gathered and obscurations purified. Realization will done. So take this practice to heart carefully and with uh, constant effort. Okay. So our minds are so busy all the time, right? Thinking this and that. Uh, so there is no sort of peace. There is no peace in our mind. Uh, really, there is no peace in our mind. So once the negative emotions diminish, uh, the mind will be very peaceful. Where or our mind is not peace because of that. So we all know that, right? We all know that. You can imagine if you have no negative thoughts and emotions, and then you have all these qualities, right? Then um, your mind will be very, very peaceful, lovely. That's why uh, uh, we we will get, uh, you see, when you meditate and then 
one once you have a good mood, uh, meditation uh, then you will get three experiences first right a bliss or comfort um, clarity um, the other one is what absence of thoughts um, these things so for when when you experience for instance bliss um, it's a sign that um, your attachment has sort of temporarily dissolved. Um, uh, when you experience real clarity, uh, it's a sign that your aggression has temporarily ceased. And um, when you experience a state of absence of thought, uh, it's a sign that your ignorance has temporarily died. That's why you have this experience. As you continue to practice, uh, uh, you may have uh, all kinds of experience, both good and bad, right? Just as a, as, as a room with many doors and many windows allows the ear to enter from many directions. Um, but in the same way, when our mind becomes open, um, it is natural that all kinds of experience uh, can come into it. Uh, by themselves, they're good experience, uh, but if you sort of get attached to them, then they become obstacles, right? Uh, my teachers say that experience are not realization uh, um, in themselves. But if you sort of remain free of desire and attachment to them, uh, they become a, what they really are. Clarity, absence of thoughts, uh, comfort, all of that. That is your uh, transformation and your realization. Uh, do any of you have this kind of experience, bliss, and sometimes you meditate and you don't feel that you have a body? Um, so there's no like uncomfortable, you know? So you like, you know, long time you can just meditate in both your body and mind, We're very comfortable. You don't feel them actually. Um, you feel nothing. This is just sort of uh, the essence of uh, whatever you call it, the mind. That's all you see it. Other than that, nothing. So that's, if you kind of have that kind of experience, that's what we call bliss experience. And sometimes the clarity, uh, you know, like sometimes you can um, understand, you can read somebody's mind. Uh, so that kind of, you know, experience. Right now we can't because this um, aggression that's sort of prevent these qualities. Um, so um, you see, um, at that point, your three afflictions, bad habits, desire, anger, and ignorance are transformed into these three experience of bliss, clarity, non-thought. Then your mind will be very, very peaceful. So, don't expect for that kind of experience, it, it, it will come, it will come, and that, you know, naturally come, you know, if you uh, have um, enough meditate. Um, that doesn't mean you are, you are, you are, you are like, maybe you attain enlightenment, but it's a really good sign. Um, so, so that's all, you know, that's, I think, uh, that's the last, and all these teachings that I give you is, um, actually not necessary to teach you something new. Uh, you heard all of these things. These are basic teachings. That's why Buddha, uh, the Mephra uh, uh gave this teaching name is like um, 
beginners advice for beginners i'm not saying you're beginners but this teaching is for beginners that's why he talks like basic teachings of buddhism so therefore um uh, uh, there is uh, 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 I don't think I give you something special teaching today, something new that you never heard. But uh, you know, um, I really want you uh, want to uh, encourage you to put into practice uh, what you already learned, what or already you have. For example, bodhicitta, right? For example, bodhicitta. I uh, this I, I taught bodhicitta thousands, thousands of times. Bodhicitta that is more important actually than just to learn something new uh, uh, without practicing. Um, you uh, Buddha said that you can't just uh, think about compassion and kindness. You must be and must be a kind person and compassionate person. Uh, so in order to develop your ordinary mind and develop your realizations, uh, you have to do um, accumulations and purify your negative thoughts. Uh, so for all of that, you have to practice and follow the instructions. Uh, that is what Mepam uh, says here uh, in this later text. So please uh, follow his advice on practice. Uh, and uh, now the last uh, is when some beginners asked me uh, for advice on practice, I, uh, the one called Mepam, wrote this for their instructions. May virtue abounds. Done. <laughs> Not done. Meditation. <laughs> Um, okay, now I would like to give you a practice that can help you to uh, develop your devotion, since we're talking about devotion. Uh, uh, but never forget, devotion develop with your wisdom, wisdom mind. Okay, that's the key thing. And... Um, so we should practice on devotion. Uh, so you may find you don't have devotion. Maybe you have a little bit, but not so pure, uh, not genuine um, when you think about it. Or you may think that devotion is uh, superstition or uh, blind faith, or you don't think it is important to develop. Um, if you think that, that is, again, lack of your wisdom. Uh, that means you don't understand devotion. Uh, so what you need is what we call a heart practice. It means, heart practice means in the sky, in front. Pray to whichever enlightened being inspires you the most. And consider that uh, this enlightened being represents your wisdom and your refuge, your protector. And of course, uh, represents all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and Masters. And even if you cannot imagine any one form, just to feel the presence like strongly and Survandipa, you know, like invoke his or her power, compassion, and blessing. That's enough. That's enough. That's the visualization. And then open your heart and ask your help for help. If you do that, there is someone, I don't know, who is absolutely 
there for you. And who understand you with love and compassion. So, and then, not only that, imagine beautiful rays of light sort of stream out towards you from that enlightened being. And imagine that light is a nectar and transforming all your negative emotions into great blessing of that enlightened being. Not only for yourself, but also think of everybody. If you want, you can say some prayers, like there are lots of devotion prayers. You can say some prayers, or you can say there are mantras, uh, if you want. If you don't want, that's fine, just to visualize all these things. And then, at the end, let your mind dissolve into its nature, and you should look deeply into your mind's nature. means like you look directly at that experience and its essence. If you see the recognize its nature, then it will be easy to develop your devotion. That's how you develop devotion. The first time you don't have a genuine devotion, but once you have this experience through your meditation, then it comes because of your wisdom. If you have like tried to develop blind devotion, nothing will happen. It will not change your mind. But with wisdom mind, you practice devotion, it will come. Okay? Ready? 10 minutes, please. <coughs>
Right. <clears throat> now we have closing prayers, so well done teaching and meditation. We have written transmission. Um you have some instructions. So please practice, put them into your practice, and try to mix your uh, Dharma practice in your worldly life as much as you can. Um, uh, and uh, uh, thank you very much for come uh, to the class teaching today. I appreciate it, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, lunch, food, thank you volunteers, thank you for Zamba, thank you for Bali, thank you for everything, thank you for everything, support our Sangha. Uh, so I appreciate, thank you very much, we have a good day. And um, next Saturday, uh, usually we have Sunday teaching at uh, morning, but this uh, different schedule right now. Uh, we have every Saturday, not Sunday teaching, every Saturday, uh, one retreat, like long day, one, one day retreat, a Saturday a month, uh, one, one retreat a month, and two Saturday, like two hour teaching meditation session, Saturday at two o'clock, not 10 o'clock. Don't forget that, different schedule, so two o'clock. So please come if you have time, if you can. Uh, if you feel like you want to practice, uh, please come. Um, other than that, I hope uh, you have a good uh, weekend and uh, um, happy, enjoy your life. So very good to see all of you. Thank you so very much. 
uh, I appreciate and um, uh, I will keep all of you in my uh, thoughts and prayer. Every day I will do that. Um, and uh, with that, then we have uh, this dedication, dedicate the merit of your practice, our teaching, meditation to all sentient beings. <laughs> So, may I attain in each and every life the sublime virtues of existence and peace. May I pursue the followless minds of truism, working for the welfare of others on vast scale. Through this very merit of mine, may every single sentient being eliminate all forms of negativity and practice virtues forevermore. May supreme precious bodhicitta birth where it has not a reason, where it has a reason, may it never win, but continue to grow forevermore. May I in all my lives, no matter where I'm born, obtain the seven qualities of the upper realms of existence. May I meet the Dhamma immediately after taking birth, and I have the freedom to practice perfectly. May I please the sublime gurus. Then and I dedicate myself to the Dharma. By realizing Dharma and practice its inner distance, may I cross the ocean of conditioned existence in this very life. May I teach the sublime Dharma. And I never become weary and tired, benefiting others in samsara. By own, my own pressure and all our campus and activities, but others may all. You, the sovereign of all the Buddha families and teachers of the Tantras, mature and liberate the three gates of the Buddha's nature. As the king, may you ever remain. Within, within the Raja body, we reveal the mandala, a great bliss of the indestructible three secrets. Most supreme of all, Lord of the Vajra transmission, Raja Master, may you remain.